As a psychologist, I am deeply convinced that the things that I study and the things that other psychologists study are not entirely genetically determined. Do genes play a role? Absolutely, and you can't change your DNA. But I also think there's room for reverse engineering the people that we most admire, for example, the people who are paragons of grit, asking, well, what are they really? What are their habits? What are their beliefs? What are their attitudes, their values? Who were their mentors? What were their formative experiences? And say, well, if that's the way that they became this way, in part, not just their genes, then maybe I can do a little bit of that, and maybe I can find a little more passion and perseverance in my own life. I've identified four characteristics of gritty individuals that I do think are things we can work on, things that we can emulate. The first is that when gritty individuals have a passion, the seed of that passion is interest. They're curious about something that they typically learned about as a kid, as a teenager, for example, you know, a day where they came home from school and started watching cooking on public television, which led them to read a cookbook, which led them to want to work in a kitchen when it was time for them to get a job, which led them eventually to a lifelong love affair with food. Interest is the first characteristic that I would say to be um, committed to because it is the very beginning of, of passion and it seems to precede the next three things that I'll, I'll talk about. The second is practice. Deliberate practice is the technical term for how experts get better at what they do. Having discovered something that really begins to interest you and getting deeper into that interest, you have to work to get better at it. It's not enough to think that something's fun and enjoyable. There is a discipline to working on things that you can't yet do in that domain with feedback so that you can incrementally improve day after day after day. The third phase of development of a mature paragon of grit is the phase of purpose. Sometimes it's called a period of integration with your identity. And it's here where a mature, usually adult paragon of grit says, look, it started off as a seed of interest. I worked hard to get better at it, but now I see how this is a calling for me. This is uh, really related to my deeply held personal values. I, I know that this is the way that I'm going to try to make the world a better place, the way that I'm going to have an impact on other people. So those are three phases, and actually that is the complete story. So when I said that there was a fourth phase, it was uh, really to say that there's a fourth element that you can reverse engineer about mature paragons of grit, and that is that they maintain hope when many others lose hope. It's not really the fourth phase, because I think no matter how old you are, and whatever your stage of development, you need to believe that there's something you can do to change your situation. When you are young, when you are getting older, there are going to be bad days. And on those bad days, do you give up or do you keep going? The science of hope has matured in the last 50 years. And one thing we know is that these hopeful paragons of grit really have a growth mindset. They're optimistic in the sense that they believe that human beings adapt, learn, and grow in the face of challenge. So can we become more interested in something that eventually becomes a lifelong curiosity? Can we learn to practice like experts too with feedback on our weaknesses and the courage to repeat the endeavor all over again to get a little bit better every day? Can we find purpose in what we do? Can we say, you know what, this work is not just for me, it's for other people and making their lives better. And finally, can we learn to find hope? Can we believe that human beings adapt and grow in the face of challenge? I think all four of these things are malleable, and I think all four of these things should be supported by our culture and our society.